for Doom and Gloom. It was a disappointing first season, but I've come up with five positives that I'm going to take away from it. The reality is most Speedway fans will not get a first season, so the fact that it happened at all is a massive positive. I did lose sight of that a couple of times this season. There were times where I felt very defeated, very deflated, and uh, there was points that I wished I could turn back time and go and undo the whole decision. But then at just the right time, somebody at some point always reminded me that you know, this is such a rare opportunity and it was, it may not have happened straight away, but eventually I turned it around and, and was like, yep, yeah, cool, this is tough, but at least it's happening. I did lose track of that at some points this season. Uh, when things aren't going well, it's really easy. I'm not going to lie to to lose sight of the opportunity that I have here, but it also didn't just fall into my lap either. A lot of risks were taken and I sacrificed a little bit more than I would ever openly admit uh, to make this happen. And when things aren't going well, it kind of feels like you're getting punched in the gut twice. You know, you gave up so much to get to this point and then it's not going well. It just feels like a double gut punch, but it's still an opportunity that most folks won't get. So going forward, I'm going to do a better job of keeping the perspective of this is such a rare opportunity. Don't let it slip and just be completely consumed by the negatives. Probably the biggest and most welcome surprise out of this whole process has been the interactions of the people that I've met in the process. My crew is mostly made up of people who reached out because they saw something on Facebook or YouTube and wanted to help. Cameron Lennox, that was exactly what happened with him. He either saw something on Facebook or YouTube, I'm not sure which one it was, uh, saw that I was probably going to struggle without guidance, without some kind of leader, so I reached out and said, hey, I want to help. And uh, Cameron Scroop, I don't think we'd actually interacted at any point, but he just appeared in our pit bay at the first race and just got on the tools. Like, it didn't even need to be asked, just went in and started digging. Uh, Keith was a friend from skateboarding. Ben has uh, been a friend for over my half of my life now, who's a mechanic. Aaron is not a mechanic by trade, but he is just unbelievably good with his hands. Uh, Simon really stepped up when uh, we needed to get those new pistons in. Uh, and I, I, I've made the mistake of starting to name names here because I'm, I'm sure to miss some people out. But even, uh, you know, Troy Wright reached out to me and knew that I didn't have a trailer. So offered his up whenever I needed it. I haven't had to rent a trailer this season because he offered his up whenever I needed it. It doesn't stop there either. You know, Ian Watts who sold me the car could have just sold me the car and sent me on my way. But no, he stayed with me and he was there like the first time I drove the car to make sure everything went smoothly. Cameron Collier, we knew each other from sim racing and YouTube and you know he you know, dove in there when he could and came out to Pathara with me for that horrible, horrible night. But you know, again, I'm gonna stop naming names because I'm gonna forget someone super important. But you know, the not only the people who weren't directly helping, the amount of messages that I've received in the last six, seven months just with words of support or you know, just generous offers and it, it's and at the track the, the the amount of folks who come and say hello to us at the track in the pit bay is mind-blowing it, it's not we don't have lines of people by any by any means but it, it's more than i ever thought would would ever show up at my pit bay and nobody who you know who completed you know two races in his in his first season uh you know in a class that generally people don't know about or watch for some reason well not for some reason but they felt like they can come and say hello and that i'm super stoked about even just this week i met up with someone who i hadn't seen in six seven months and they don't really know me that well but they uh, they see what i'm trying to do here and they put in some money to to get me my new msd box and harness for next season like i just never thought things like this would happen and those are the kinds of things that are going to really drive me forward into next season grand scheme of things i still know absolutely nothing but i know a thousand percent more about sprint cars and dirt racing than what i did when i started it gave me a whole new level of appreciation for anybody who has pursued racing in any form in any class because yeah like to me this is tough because it's my first time doing it and i don't really have someone standing by my side at all times to guide me through it cameron like the camerons do everything they can to uh uh, to help me in the process as do Craig and Ron and everybody else in the LS1 class but you know it, it, unless you have someone physically holding your hand through the whole process it's it's kind of daunting 
And it's just, again, giving me a whole new level of appreciation for anyone who's done it. And it, it also makes me understand and appreciate the, the higher tier teams because I'm doing this at like a beer league level. You know what I mean? And like it gives me a whole new level of appreciation for like the 360 and the 410 teams, the midget teams, the lay models, and like those high tier classes that do this far more regularly. And when the racing is a lot more cutthroat, there's a lot more at stake. You know, man, I'm not sure if I ever would have appreciated it for just how much work actually goes into it. So if nothing else, I'm taking away that, you know, those uh, those crew chiefs, crew members, drivers, everyone deserves a little bit more credit than, uh, than what they might get already. It also made me appreciate more just how dangerous this is. You know, you see flips and crashes pretty regularly, you know, especially if you watch 360, 410 competition and stuff like that. But... I remember in my first race, I took my first turn, I looked over to my right and there was a car in the air and upside down. And at that point I was like, oh yeah, that's right, that can happen. I just, you know, I got so caught up in this actually happening, I forgot that things like that are a possibility. And you're know, just this year we've seen, you know, a death in a non-wing sprint car in the US, the guy that got ejected out of his midget at the Chili Bowl, uh, Carson Macedo's crash just this week at Knoxville. Uh, oh, Callum Williamson's uh, crashed, uh, what was it, maybe two days before the Australian title this year. Lee Redmond, you know, he got messed up in that midget crash at the Motorplex this year. Like, this is a really dangerous sport. And uh, I, I got to say that, you know, I, I see people at the Motorplex get up and cheer when certain drivers crash. And if you're that person, I urge you to stop and think about just how dangerous this is if you're cheering for somebody to flip like i understand that like you know you may not be a fan of any given driver but this is horrifically dangerous and people are really putting it on the line uh for you know your entertainment essentially and cheering for them to flip and stuff like that it's not classy and uh it you know you, eventually you're going to get up and cheer at the wrong time and they're not going to get out of the car so maybe address that uh, that behavior because it, it really needs to slow down and stop completely to be honest there's a part of me that doesn't believe what i'm about to say but i am actually weirdly thankful for the challenge that we had to go through this season I would have soon rather have not had to do any of the stuff that we had to do. Uh, pulling the engine apart, replacing pistons, constantly pulling the hood off after every time we come off the track just to try and figure out what was going on. But in the process, I developed uh, a bit of confidence on tools for the first time ever. I have never been a hands-on, fix-it, use-the-tools kind of person. Uh, very, very open about that. Um, but even though I had to be shown how to do a lot of the things just last week I was able to strip the fuel system and and remove all the electrics from the car because for the first time in my entire life I've actually had the confidence to approach doing something like that and Without having to go through the struggles that we had to this season I guarantee I wouldn't have done that on my own. So for that I am kind of thankful it's pretty grim to say, but there's very few ways in which season two could go worse than what season one did. So that's only more reason to be optimistic about season two. We've got a pretty good handle on what's wrong with the car and why it didn't fire off in Pathara. I've got my short shopping list, which is now actually going to be fulfilled thanks to the generosity of some people. And with a new MSD box and harness, I'm pretty sure we'll be good to go for first race of 23-24. Uh, schedule for the next LS1 season has not been put together or put out yet. I'm hoping it'll be mostly out of the Motorplex again because it is so close to home and cuts the cost of travel racing that close to home. Uh, the country tracks, unless we get some sponsorship money coming in, won't be a possibility for us because it just costs too much to get out there. And as long as I'm racing out of my own pocket, it's just not a good idea to, to dig that deep into the racing fund. But who knows we'll see if we can get some people on board that can help you know the cover the cost of going out to places like Pathara, like mora stuff like that then uh yeah we'll we'll just be hoping that we can be racing close to home again by the time i get back into the car i'll probably have to basically relearn how to drive it because the last actual laps i turned were in january of this year it's now june and by the time i actually get back in the car it'll be October November so I feel like the progress that I made early on is probably gonna have disappeared by the time I get back into the seat but you know 
that just makes it more exciting to get back in there and try and get back to where I was and then just continue to improve with a consistently running car that we're not we can actually start chasing the track instead of fighting the engine all night the idea of having a consistently running car and being able to get out of the car and just talk to Cameron and be like yep this is what I'm feeling cool let's fix that as opposed to hey let's get the hood off and fix whatever's going on you know wrong in the engine is super exciting uh, the car is yet to really actually give me like a good night yet so I'm really looking forward to when we get our first one because if, if I believe what everyone tells me, yes, there's going to be a lot more lows than highs in this sport. I, I don't doubt that to be true, but we just haven't had a high yet. We haven't had a really good night, a, a, just a clean night where we finish every race. We're not fighting the engine. We're chasing the track a little bit as opposed to the complete opposite of that, what we have been doing. So it, I, I can't help but to be excited about the prospect of going through a whole night, not having to take the hood off and just being able to tinker with the car to try and make it better and and become better as an actual driver and finally i'm just excited to see what else this journey could expose us to i love meeting new people i love making these videos obviously driving the car itself is absolutely incredible and nothing else will even come close to matching it and you know just seeing what else might whatever else might come of this so even if we keep doing the same things, keep meeting people and keep making these videos, if that's the story forever, fine. I'm extremely happy with that. So we'll see if any other opportunities come up. But at this point, you know, I'm, I'm very optimistic. I wasn't uh, at Pathara, you know, at the end of the night, I wanted to pack it all in, just give up on the whole thing, put the car for sale and accept defeat and, you know, say that I gave it a shot. But after a couple of weeks, um, feeling far more optimistic and uh, I have a lot of faith that we can make season two far far better than season one all right gang that's it for this one uh, if you're not subscribed to this YouTube channel please do that it doesn't cost anything and I think we're 95 subscribers away from reaching a thousand that would be really cool I'm also on Facebook Instagram and TikTok, all the same handle at rain Lisa motorsport if you or your business would like to sponsor the car, get a sticker on the car, have your logo in the YouTube videos and the TikToks and the Instagram reels and all that kind of stuff, feel free to reach out. The email address is rainleasemotorsport at gmail.com. I have a few sponsorship packages that I've just kind of built up and I've just got myself an ABN so I can now actually write invoices for sponsorship packages. If you're interested, um, we've got you know sponsorship packages starting from a thousand bucks for a season. So if you're interested, please reach out. All right, gang, thanks for checking it out. Appreciate it. Till next time. Bye for now.